All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Jigsaw Ball Python. The Jigsaw actually consists of two jeans, the Mojave and the Pinstripe. And when it comes to the Jigsaw and Jigsaw combos, there's quite a bit of confusion because in some of these combos, they actually have multiple names for the same number of jeans. For the same snake can have multiple names and it gets a little bit confusing if you're actually looking over on Morph Market looking for some Jigsaw combos and you may be tricked into thinking they're actually different snakes. Sometimes the Jigsaws and the combos can actually be really variable from one snake to the other in a visual appearance and sometimes they can have completely different names too so when you're looking at two different snakes they may have the same genetics and may have a different look and a different name so I want to clear some of that up today and the other thing that's pretty cool when you actually work other genes into the jigsaw you can get some really amazing <laughs> jigsaw combinations so today I'm going to jump over the internet and I want to show you some of the potential of the jigsaw ball Python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on MorphMarket.com and I want to start with the Mojave. The Mojave is one component of the Jigsaw Ball Python. The Mojave is actually in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So if you breed two Mojaves together, you get an all-white snake with blue eyes. And a lot of people kind of avoid making the white snake, although the white snake, the all-white snake with the blue eyes is really in high demand. But if you have a lot of genes in a blue-eyed leucistic, essentially it masks all the other genes in there. And a lot of times you don't really know what other genes are in your blue-eyed leucistic. So for example, if you took a jigsaw and you bred it to a Mojave, a Lesser, or a Russo, or a Bamboo, or anything in the blue-eyed leucistic, 25% of the time you're going to end up with an all-white snake with blue eyes. A lot of people try to avoid it, and some people actually go for the white snake because it's really in high demand, especially at the reptile shows. A lot of people are always picking up and holding the blue-eyed leucistics on the tables. It's kind of interesting. And another component of of the jigsaw is the pinstripe. This is what a pinstripe looks like. And the pinstripe is a dominant mutation. You actually breed it with something else. Half the offspring come out as pinstripe. Probably the brightest gold standalone morph that you can get. And it mixes really well with a lot of different combinations. As a matter of fact, the pinstripe is really inexpensive. You can actually look at the price right over here. This one actually sold for $50. Probably the shipping on this is probably more than what this pinstripe sold. And if you actually take the pinstripe and mix it with the Mojave, 25% of the time you get a jigsaw. This is what the jigsaw looks like. And the jigsaw looks almost like the pinstripe. The pinstripe is really visually dominant when you actually mix it with a lot of combinations. And you can definitely tell the Mojave really lightens the sides and kind of jumbles up the pattern. And I think the, the jigsaw gets its name from this crazy line right on top of the snake. It almost like, uh, looks like someone took an electric jigsaw and just cut a line right down the top of the snake. And that's I think that's where the jigsaw gets its name. So what I want to do is I want to show you the jigsaw mixing in some of these other genes and some of the confusing names that you can actually have when you mix in other, it can get really confusing mixing other genes in with the jigsaw. And I want to start with the cinnamon. The cinnamon is a dark morph. You mix it with other genes and you end up with a really dark background. As a matter of fact, if you take two cinnamons, breed them together, you get a super cinnamon, which is a completely black pattern ball python looks really awesome. The cinnamon's actually allelic with black pastel. If you actually cross a cinnamon with the black pastel, you get an eight ball, which is an even darker, all black, patternless snake. Pretty awesome. If you take the cinnamon and you work it into the jigsaw, this is what you get. You get a chainsaw. So you actually have the jigsaws and the chainsaws. And this one's pretty cool. You actually get almost like, it almost looks like three stripes right down the top of the back of the snake. It almost looks like someone took a chainsaw and designed this one. It's pretty awesome. And kind of the interesting thing about this is this is the cinnamon, the Mojave, and the pinstripe. So the Mojave and the pinstripe are the jigsaw. And the cinnamon, if you actually cross the cinnamon with pastel, the cinnamon and pastel are the, it's actually called the pewter, the cinnamon and the pastel. The pewter is kind of, kind of a silvery looking kind of a snake. And if 
if you actually take the pewter, work it into the jigsaw, take a look at this, you actually get what is known as the Leatherface, which is kind of an interesting ball python name, the Leatherface. As a matter of fact, you can actually come over here on Morph Market, type in Leatherface, and do a search, and it'll actually break up all the genes into all four of these genes. The cinnamon and the pastel is the pewter, and then the Mojave and the pinstripe is the jigsaw. So this is actually the pastel. When you actually add pastel into a jigsaw, things get a little bit more confusing as far as naming the ball python. There's a lot of different ways you can actually name it. And the pastel is, as a matter of fact, there's different lines of pastel. Some of them are really bright yellow and some of them are a little bit faded. And someone actually asked me, can you actually breed together all the different lines of pastel to make the super pastel? Are they all compatible? And as far as I know, you can actually take a really bright pastel, breed it with kind of a brown round out pastel and you'll make the super pastel in pretty much all cases that I know of. If you actually take the pastel and mix it in with the jigsaw, you get the pastel Mojave pinstripe, which is the, the Mojave and the pinstripe is the jigsaw and then the, the pastel is the other gene on top of it. So this is kind of the, the simple way to say the, the name of the, as a matter of fact, I wish everyone would do this at the reptile shows instead of all these fancy lingos and everything else. Sometimes you're scratching your head, it's like, what are the genes in that snake? And a lot of times I would wish people would just put Mojave, Pastel, and Pinstripe on their display case so I know exactly what genes are in the snake. But if you actually kind of look at the different names, you can actually name this the Pastel Jigsaw, which makes sense because essentially it's the Jigsaw with the Pastel added to it. But there's a few other names you can actually name the snake. And take a look at this. This is the Pastavi Pin. Same exact genes, and the, the, if you actually look at the, the color and the pattern on the snake, sometimes there's big differences in the colors and the patterns of the same exact genes. It's kind of an interesting anomaly. And if, if you actually look at these, the Mojave and the Pastel are also called the Pastavi. So the Pastavi pin or the Pastavi pinstripe is another name for this combination. As a matter of fact, you can also name it the Lemon Blast Mojave, because if you actually Actually look at the genes the pinstripe and the pastel is the the slang for that is the lemon blast so this is called the lemon blast Mojave and all these different names you can kind of go on and on and on you can also shorten it to Mojave blast another shortcut for this name it's, it's, it kind of goes down this rabbit hole you can also call it the jigsaw blast and you look at all these different names on all the different display cases at the reptile shows you're like wait a minute are all these snakes actually the same and sure enough even though they look a little bit different and they're named different they all have the same gene the, the mojave the pastel and the pinstripe and you can actually take this and you can add one more copy of pastel to the mix, make it even a little bit more confusing, and you actually get the Mojave Super Blast, or sometimes with the, the Super Pastel, you can also use the name Killer, so it could actually be like the uh, like the Killer Jigsaw or something like that. You know, there's all these different names, and you kind of get creative as far as what genes are in there, as far as naming all the genes in the snake. So from here, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you some of the more impressive jigsaw combinations with some of these genes that I picked out. The first one I want to show you is the leopard. The leopard is actually, a, I, I kind of call it a pseudo dark morph because if there's anything dark in the mix, you add leopard and it really darkens and enhances the color. And if you actually add it to something that's not dark, it doesn't really darken it, but it really jumbles up the pattern in all cases. And here's what happens if you add leopard to the jigsaw and take a look at this. This is a really awesome combo, the leopard jigsaw. So this actually has the leopard, the Mojave, and the pinstripe in the same snake. Really just kind of breaks up the pattern and really just shatters it. I really love how it's really kind of spotted over the whole entire snake. So here is a ghost, kind of the short for ghost is also hypo, you, you hear a lot. A lot of people interchange ghost and hypo. Actually, ghost is a recessive mutation, and essentially what it does is it really fades out the snakes, gives it more of like a creamy color, and it reduces a lot of the contrast. And a lot of people, you know, the, the, I'd say ghost is probably one of the most popular genes over here on Morph Market. As, as a matter of fact, you need two copies of the gene since it's recessive, so it's a little bit harder to actually hit ghost combinations 
Legends. But if you actually hit the Ghost Jigsaw, take a look at this. This is probably one of my favorite Ghost combos of all time. It's also called the Hypo Jigsaw or the Ghost Jigsaw. It makes for a really impressive snake. It really just fades it out and it really changes the color. It almost gives it like a greenish kind of a yellow hue to it. it looks almost exactly like a Jigsaw, but it just changes the color completely. Here's another really interesting combo when you mix it with GHI with the Jigsaw. The GHI is actually a dark morph, and it's, it's one of the, the kind of the true dark morphs. If you mix it with almost anything else, even if the background isn't light, to, isn't dark to start with, the GHI really darkens the background of the snake. And if you actually make a super GHI, it looks almost like a GHI that is super dark, and it really scrambles up the pattern too. So here's what happens if you mix GHI in with the jigsaw. Take a look at this. <laughs> this is kind of an interesting combo. And at first you're like kind of scratching your head, what in the world is going on with this GHI jigsaw? And if you actually look at kind of what's going on with the genetics, the GHI Mojave, if you actually are familiar with that combination, it's a really black, really dark snake. And the line on top, instead of a solid line, it's kind of a like a dotted line right up on top of the snake. If you actually add the pinstripe to the GHI Mojave, essentially what it does is it connects all the dots on the GHI Mojave to make this really strong solid line. Probably one of my favorite GHI Mojave combos. Here is the blackhead, and when it comes to really dark morphs, the blackhead is probably the darkest of the dark when it comes to combos. And it's kind of interesting, when you look at it as a standalone morph, it looks almost like the wild type, the normal ball python. But you can see the background is really super dark, and in all cases with the blackhead, the head is super dark black. And here's what happens if you mix blackhead in with a jigsaw. Take a look at this, it really kind of changes the entire entire color of the snake it really jumbles up the pattern too and you still uh, the, the, kind of one of the things I really like a lot a lot about all these jigsaw combos is it has a really strong stripe right down the top it seems like it's really visually dominant as far as the stripe is concerned in a lot of the jigsaw combos and I think that is why the jigsaw really holds on to its name because it really keeps a really strong stripe on the top and you can definitely tell the blackhead is darkening the whole background especially around on the top. So here is kind of an interesting combo, the banana, and when you actually mix it with the jigsaw, makes a really amazing combination. This is the banana. The banana is actually kind of can trick you because as a juvenile, it has a lot of these lavenders and a lot of oranges, and when it actually matures, it turns into like a two-tone yellow and gets a bunch of freckles all of its thing. It kind of freaks you out too because you're looking at these little spots on your little ball python, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I actually have mites, and come to find out, you know, in the bananas, and the coral glows. A lot, of, a lot of people think the banana and the coral glows the same gene, and they pretty much act exactly the same. And you get these little tiny freckles all over the snake that can kind of freak you out if you're not familiar with banana. And here's what happens if you work banana in with the jigsaw. Take a look at this. This is one of my favorite combos, the banana Mojave pinstripe. Take a look at that beauty. That is really impressive. As a matter of fact, I was kind of looking at the price on this one. This one is only $300 so you can actually get into a lot of these combinations for relatively little money compared to a lot of the other ball python morphs. All right, so it is time for the question of the day and Andy Garvin asks, how did you get rid of your fungus gnats? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I still have fungus gnats here in my reptile room, and they are a plague. Let me tell you, the fungus gnats, I actually, they actually reproduce in the coconut husk substrate. And at one point, I had so many fungus gnats. If you actually look back at some of my old videos, they're actually on the camera lens and on my face and just driving me crazy. And I actually finally got rid of them. At one point, I got rid of them by swapping out all my coconut husk, and I went to a paper 
paper substrate for my ball pythons and pretty much almost completely got rid of them. And then I switched back to the coconut husk. And I think the problem is, is I have a lot of house plants in my house and they actually get into the house plants at a really low level and they eventually come back into my reptile room. And I'm kind of afraid of actually using any kind of a spray or any kind of a chemical because I have, you know, the frogs and my feeder insects and all that. And every time, you know, I go, kind of go down that road where I actually spray for something, I end up losing some animals or some feeder insects or something like that. So I'm kind of trying to do it the mechanical way. And really the best way to get rid of them is to change your coconut husk with paper and go to paper for a few weeks and then switch back to the coconut husk. I still think the coconut husk is the best substrate for ball pythons. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.